Hey everyone, welcome back to our example video for trapezoid rule approximations. In this example, we're using trapezoid rule to approximate the integral of 1 over x dx from 1 to 4. So our a is 1, our b is 4. We're going to use six trapezoids to approximate to this. So we have our area approximation formula up here we have delta x over 2 times our sum. Remember that the first and last term in the sum are not doubled and every other term in between with our y values are doubled. So we'll go ahead and find our delta x first. Remember that delta x is always going to be our b minus a over n if we're doing regular intervals. So in this case we will have 4 minus 1 over 6 intervals, so n is 6, so that would be 3 over 6, which would be 1 half. So now that tells me right away that each time I plug in a new x value, I will need to move over 1 half, and then I will know what to plug in. So my interval is from 1 to 4. 1 is going to be my x0, since I'm using six subintervals, I know that this is going to be my x6. So we start at x0, end at x6, and then I will go up by a half each time. So if I think about going up by a half, that would put me at one and a half, or three halves. That's my x1. If I go up another half, that would be two. That'll be my x2. If I go up another half, that will be two and a half, or five halves, which is x3. If I go up another half, that will be 3. That will be my x4. And then if I go up another half, that will be 3 and a half or 7 halves, and that will be my x5. So these are all of the x values I need to plug into my original function to get the y values that I need to use in the formula. So remember that my function is going to be 1 over x that I'm plugging into. So I'll plug those values into that. Okay, so if x0 is 1, then that means my f of 1, and this is just a reciprocal function, 1 over x, the reciprocal of 1 is 1. That'll be my easy way to calculate these this time. Uh, x1 is 3 halves, and so if I take the reciprocal of 3 halves, 1 over 3 halves, that would be 2 thirds. For my next x value, x2, that's 2. And if I plug that in, so in other words, f of 2 would be 1 half. My x3 value is 5 halves. So if I plug that in to my function, the reciprocal of 5 halves will be 2 over 5 x4 is 3, and if I plug that into my 1 over x, then I will get 1 third. x5 is 7 halves. If I plug that into my function, f of 7 halves, I will get the reciprocal 2 over 7. And then my last x value, x6, is 4, and if I plug in 4, I will get 1 over 4. Okay, so those are my y values now. I can plug those in. I'm going to actually rewrite my trapezoid rule formula here uh, in terms of n equals 6. So we'll go ahead and say that we're going to approximate the area by using delta x over 2 times, now remember the first and last y value, we only have one of those and then we will have 2 of every other y value. So 2 times fx1 plus 2 times f of x2 plus 2 times f of x3 and f of x4 and the second to last one f of x5 and when we get to the last one recall that we will only have a one of those so a single f of x6 on the end. Now let's plug all of our information in and see what we get. So we'll approximate the area with, if I have delta x is 1 half, 1 half over 2 is going to give me 1 fourth there, and f of x 0 is 1 plus 2 times f of x 1, 2 thirds, 
plus two times the next value, which was one half, plus two times f of x3, which was two fifths, plus two times f of x4, which was one third, plus two times f of x5, which was two over seven, plus f of x6, only one of those, which is a fourth. Okay, so we'll go ahead and let's at least multiply everything by two. So I'll say one fourth and leave that out front. So I have one plus this would be four thirds plus two times a half would be one plus two times two fifths would be four fifths plus two times a third plus two times two over seven, which would be four over seven plus one fourth. And let's combine maybe simply as much as we feel comfortable with on the inside there. So I have one fourth. Um, I have a one plus one gives me two. I have four thirds plus two thirds. That's six thirds. That gives me another two. Now I have four fifths and four sevenths and one fourth left. We'll say 4 over 5 plus 4 over 7 plus 1 over 4. If I go ahead and get a common denominator inside and I think about what do 4 and 5 and 7 all go into, um, I might say they all go into 140. So this would be 280 over 140 plus another 280 over 140. Plus to get 140 here, I'd multiply by 28. So that would be 112 over 140. To get 140 here, I'd multiply by 20. So that would be 80 over 140. And then to get 140 here, I would multiply by 35. So that would be 35 on top. Okay, so then we'll go ahead and add all our stuff in here. And that's going to give us 787 on the top over 140. We'll go ahead and multiply our bottom by four now. And so our approximation, we get 787 over 560. Here we're going to do one more example. Um, we're using only four trapezoids this time. This is actually a function that we would not be able to integrate by hand using elementary functions. So this is actually a great candidate for trapezoid rule. Our last example was kind of just to give you a first example with an easy function to deal with. One over ln x is not horrible to plug into, but it's not something we can integrate by hand, and so we would actually use trapezoid rule with this. Okay, first thing that we'll do is go ahead and get our delta x. So if I am going from 2 to 6 and I have n equals 4, remember delta x is b minus a over n. So in this case, it will be 6 minus 2 over 4, which happens to be a very convenient number 1. So when I am deciding what to plug in over my interval from 2 to 6, I know that I'll be going up by 1 each time. So if my a or my x0 is 2, and my b is 6, which is also my x4, because I'm using four trapezoids, then I know that I will simply be going up by 1 each time, 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6. So 3 will be my x1, 4 will be my x2, 5 will be x3. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our y values. Remember, we need f of x values, not x values, to put in our trapezoid formula. So x0 equals 2 and f of 2 is going to be 1 over ln 2. We will have x1 equal to 3. If we plug that in, we will get f of 3 is 1 over ln of 3. If we plug in x2, which is 4, then f of 4 will give us 1 over ln 4 x3 here equals 5, so we will plug in 
and 1 over ln 5 will be our y value there. x4 is equal to 6, so when we plug in that, we will get 1 over ln 6. These numbers are not the nicest to work with by hand. We could either just leave these or get decimal approximations if we want to. Let's go ahead and write the version of the formula that we're going to use with n equals 4 here. So our area is going to be approximated by, remember, delta x is always over 2. For this, we'll have f of x0, always a single of the first, we'll have 2 of the other y values until we get to the second to last y value. So 2 f of x1, 2 f of x2s, and 2 f of x3s. And then your last y value, we will just have a single f of x4. And we'll plug into that formula. Okay, let's go ahead and approximate our area then. So we will have area is approximately Delta x over 2 would just be 1 half because delta x is 1 here. And then we'll have 1 over ln 2 plus 2 over ln 3 plus 2 over ln 4 plus 2 over ln 5. And then we will have plus 1 over ln 6. We could do some minor things with this where we maybe change ln of 4 into something like 2 ln 2 and look at common denominators or reducing and combining a couple of terms, but most of these aren't going to combine. If we go ahead and maybe use some sort of a decimal approximation for this and we add these together, we'll get that the area is approximately 3.2533-ish, uh, 3 uh, depending on how far we want to round on this. Hopefully our two examples have given you a good idea of how to approximate area under a curve using trapezoid rule. We'll see you in the next video.